Hello viewers, it is I, James Com, the guy on the bike, your half-assed reporter and winner on Chebecca. I want to send out a worldwide thanks to the people that helped me get my YouTube station back. And we're going to run in here to Klaus von Nixagen and see an exhibition by one of our old friends. Stay tuned. The proprietors, Rob and Sam, haven't seen you for a while, gentlemen. All right. Well, we'll come in and do our stroll through here. I've been visiting Klaus von Nixagen for uh, probably 18 years, probably about as long as I've been doing the YouTube videos. <laughs> and this is the first time I've been to this space. I popped in on when they were in the Lower East Side. Clear blue sky for JG 2023 acrylic glitter pastel and acrylic spray paint on canvas. Well, I was just up talking to Rob and he said the, the show opened last night. Unfortunately, I was involved in some other things and I didn't make it, but uh, God, at least we get in here today. Uh, and so this is 54 by 45 inches. As I said, I've been watching Tamara's work for a long time. I'm a fan. Uh, she was in a series of shows that I was in last summer that was curated by Fong Bui and the Brooklyn Rail. And uh, so we get to hang out quite a bit. She's also Chris Martin's partner. So uh, that's a double connection. Okay, this is titled Ultramarine 2023 Acrylic and Pastel on Canvas. Okay, one of the things I want you to note in the show is that, uh, okay, the show is titled Amplifiers. <laughs> and a lot of this is dealing with the idea of the frame, which I like. I uh, probably spent about 25 years of my painting career making paintings and frames, a lot of the paintings were about the frames. And uh, so I, I'm familiar with the kind of vocabulary that Tamara's working with. I think the other thing that's kind of fun is that um, a lot of the painterly aspects of the work, although there are paintings in the middle of the paintings, a lot of the real painterly part is actually in the frame. These are all acrylic and pastel on canvas. This one is 40 by 35. And I'm looking at the central part here and I'm thinking of uh, Alma Thomas, who I've got, some, I've got some video of. I recorded her show at the National Portrait Gallery when I was in DC a little while ago. And I'm gonna stick that in somewhere. Maybe I'll paste it together with this. This is titled Milagros 2023, 40 by 35. Well, as I said, I've known Tamara for a long time and I've had a chance to watch her work develop. I remember when I first started seeing the work, she had a lot of glitter, buttons, uh, fake jewels and all kinds of garnishes that were on the paintings and uh, well watching her she's become more of a more of a painter and is less involved with the sticking things on although she still does it but I think the difference is that um, she uses the paint in a very serious way and the the things that she adds on is very strategic so uh, 
it's less kind of a question of the, the minimalist or the maximalist approach, which is what she was kind of doing when she got started. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna actually go backwards from what it says in the, the guide, which is usually the way I do things anyway. This is titled Runts 2023, 60 by 48. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, I've watched her develop as a painter, and uh, so she's got her own vocabulary of devices and things that she uses. Uh, and some of the pieces we've seen, she does a kind of a spray through a stencil thing, so she's got patterns and things like that. Uh, some of these things look like maybe she's dabbing on parts of this with a sponge or something. Okay. Clear blue sky and viewfinder. Okay, so these are five by four feet. Uh, and I was saying, she's, she's doing things dealing with the frame, but I can't help but look at this piece and think of a Matisse, kind of one of his views through the window. Um, I guess the ironic part to that would be that the whole idea of the frame for a couple hundred years was that uh, it functioned like a window. Okay, this is a good example of you've got a very basic kind of minimalist washy thing in the middle and then the, the serious painting is all around the edge. Okay, this is Tupier 2023. And this is one that's not exactly about the frame. I think uh, Tamara is also one of the people that I know that uses thin paint, a lot of transparent kind of light stained acrylic stuff, but she does a very good job of it. Okay, so I also have some some drawing in there. What does that say? Uh, acrylic and pastel on canvas, but it also looks like she might have some uh, paint marker in there. Winter Reflections. Forty by thirty-five. Inside out. Twenty twenty-three. Okay, so that's a very limited pod. But again, I think uh, yeah, Tamara is kind of building up her. Composition like she was laying bricks. These are all looks like sponge prints. Mist above water. As I was saying, she's very subtle and uh, I'm just thinking, I'm wondering whether these canvases are primed or whether she's Soaking that into raw cotton duck. Looks like it's unprimed. I could be wrong. Okay, and this one we've got a frame within a frame.
electromagnetic, soft rose pink, photosynthesis, Kind of interesting. Looks like she did some uh, some masking, and then she had uh, <laughs> little blots come in under the tape. Okay, I guess you could kind of consider the uh, the glitter as part of a frame. It's titled Orange Tabby. Okay, this gets to what I was talking about, her adding the shiny stuff, but very sparingly. Clear blue sky too. Okay, and so I guess that one is clear blue sky one. Also, she's got a bunch of these that have got the uh, kind of the orange fluorescent centers in here. Light and Space, and Tangelo. Okay, Light and Space, I guess, maybe is referring to the California art movement from the 60s, the Light and Space group, Bill Irwin, and some of the people that turned into Earth artists. Tangelo. Well, I was talking about her use of the frame and the kind of the classic ideas of what a frame is, what a frame does to a painting. And uh, I think there's actually another realm of concepts dealing with the frame. I think it was Jacques Derrida that wrote something about uh, do you enjoy painting or something like that, where he gets into a kind of a philosophical approach to a frame and what a frame does. Okay, is this a strawberry horizon? Sounds like a drink you'd get in a tiki bar. What was it? So you say you're interested in painting, something like that. Anyway, uh, it's titled Pink Ice. Now it gets into the whole idea of how uh, a frame creates a special place, a special space that uh, kind of distinguishes whatever is inside there from everything else in the rest of the world and that somehow it puts it into a special category of being, of existence and uh, what does that imply, what does it mean? And then he extends that, he goes beyond just the frame of the painting and he says that, uh, you know, the room that the gallery is in or the the artisan is also a frame, and then you can extend that out to the institutions, the museums, the galleries, collections, all that stuff. 
Bioluminescence 2023. Okay, so bioluminescence is the the light that is emitted by organic beings. I guess there are some jellyfish and plankton and stuff that actually can produce light from chemical reactions. It's 40 by 35. And this is the last piece we're going to look at. Snake fluff. Acrylic on pastel on canvas, 60 by 48. Uh, Tamara has also spent some time uh, studying indigenous peoples' myths, um, ideologies, religions, things like that. So she's very much into kind of organic chemistry, maybe even the healing properties of some of these things. Okay, so I like her little drizzles of paint that uh, form the uh, struts in her frame. So this has been James Com reporting on Tamara Gonzalez amplifiers here at Klaus von Nixagen. Well, it's James Com, half ash reporter, and we are down on Henry Street. We're going to. Uh, Pop into the No Gallery and have a chat with Jack Lawler about his painting technique. Stay tuned. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jack Lawler. Jack Lawler. I am uh, almost 30. And a painter? I'm a painter uh, with Casey, my corner of No Gallery. And uh, this is my picture of uh, empty beer cans and filled up ashtray. And it's called Sunrise, because I would often wake up next to my bed stand, and this is what it would look like. Uh, what type of beer is that? I mean, they didn't give you a, they didn't give you a product placement I was, I was trying to avoid this? any sort of copyright complaints or political stances, because I know beers become very political these days. So I just really? Want to <laughs> avoid those no Bud Light for you, huh? <laughs> You know, pretend it's a Miller type beer would be my essential uh, belief. In it. Well, you know what they say: the best cheap, best beer is the cheapest beer. So <laughs> this looks like it's pretty good beer. What I was interested in, you were going to talk to us a little bit about the technique here. Yeah, I kind of referred to it when I first started making these paintings about a year and a half ago. When did I did a solo show with Casey back in October? Right, I saw it. I saw it. I was impressed. I kind of call it dot matrix printer painting, or almost like like how a typewriter works. So I kind of just I have everything gritted out and kind of marked out beforehand and I kind of just go row by row by row by row by row kind of like a printer is going ur, 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 right. ur, 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 ur. and so over time I began to it wasn't even an intentional decision really I just kind of started to when I was thinking about how can I kind of make these things more sculptural I just started laying on the lights real thick and this is all oil paint it is all oil paint and so I would do a row and I would kind of glob the paint on real hard and this is done with little brushes? I have this one number two. I have a set of four number two brushes, which have been my companions for some time now. They're always kind of being replaced. And um, So are they filberts or rounds or flat, flats? Flat, yeah, only number flats. Number two flats. Yeah, number okay. two flats. That's my good friend. And, uh, <laughs> If you can, well, as long as though. the beer isn't flat. Right? <laughs> okay. There might be a little flat beer left in this one. I'm not sure yet. But um, the tape, what I would do is pull and begin to kind of create this relief. So I began to kind of try to, in a way, pick what I think where the highlights were or what the main heavy light sources were and use that to kind of sculpt the picture over time. So these are all the highlights and then all the shadow tones will become flatter. So in a way, you have the painted shadow, but then beneath you, you actually have a real shadow over the paint oh yeah, from the paint uh, exactly. edge there. So I kind of got obsessed with that idea as I kind of 
continue to go further down. And as you can see here, it was still kind of thin, and I just got a little more uh, crazy with it as I continued down. So you have this all masked off to begin with, and then you start to paint it and peel off the layers? or the It's not even masked, it's just gridded out. So like with a pencil and a T-square, I grid out everything. So I know, like, this I think was maybe 178 across and 178 vertical. And so those will be, you know, I kind of make out those units. Okay, and then so I just that's the go basic tape by row, tape by row, tape, then. and just go up and down, top to bottom, kind of like that in this okay. repetitive manner. Okay. You know, like a, a lonely typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> Not tonight. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, Mr. Lawler, thank you for the explanation. Thank that was you very, very much, enjoyable. Sir. Thank you. And there's Casey Gleghorn, the proprietor here at the No Gallery. On Henry Street, what is the address here? 105, buddy. 105 Henry Street, okay. Thanks, Casey. We are back at the No Gallery. It was Casey Gleghorn. And uh, I came in a couple of days ago for the opening and we had a chat with Jack Lawler about his painting technique. But I wanted to come back and look at some of these other pieces. This is actually the show that's just titled Three Paintings. So it shouldn't take us too long to uh, scan over the installation. This is a piece by Benjamin Bertucci? Bertucci? Bertucci. It's titled St. Jerome in the Wilderness, 2023, oil on canvas, 20, 48 by 36. And this is based on an Albrecht Dürer etching. Okay, this is oil on canvas. I think if there's a, one thing that kind of ties a lot of this work together, it is the Kind of high austerity. It's not like we're getting into a lot of expressionism. This is pretty clinical, almost. Uh, while I was talking to Jack's mother, I said this. A lot of this kind of seems like it's uh, OCD stuff, obsessive compulsive uh, styles of painting. And she said that that was not too far from the the fact. Okay, so uh, I'm going to paste our little interview with Jack in here at the, the end of this. This is another piece by Jack, and this is titled The Race 2023. It's oil on canvas, 30 by 30. So that's the perfect shape for your Instagram paintings. I was just talking with Casey, and uh, he said this made him... Uh, Think about David Hockney, and I said I thought that this actually kind of made me think of Coney Island. Although I have to say, we'll get up and look at some of the interesting brushwork that Jack talks about. And uh, there is a great quality of the light here, even though this is all done with like almost like little chips, almost like mosaics of oil paint and uh, Casey had to have someone stationed out in front of here during the opening because the painting is still wet and he was afraid that uh, some of the revelers would come up and uh, casually lean against the painting as they were drinking a beer or something. Todd Lim, Ghost Chair, Pieta 2018. It's acrylic on canvas 57 by 57. And we were saying that this one is a little bit different, uh, although, as I was saying, there is an austerity about all of these works. And I think there's also kind of an aspect of uh, conceptual pop. 
and of using images that might have been borrowed from mass media, newspapers, advertising, uh, art historical sources. And I think this kind of also makes me think of uh, Liechtenstein. There's some more paintings in the back. Let's take a look. Well, we uh, looked at this painting by Jack the other night. We wanted to catch these. These are also by Todd. And these are, don't tell me, 16 inch squares. Is that what that is? <laughs> and obviously these are like versions of the ghost chair. But there is this something of kind of a California designer color schemes here. This makes me think that the uh, the Imes color schemes. Okay, so thanks, Casey. That was a look at uh, three paintings: Benjamin Matucci, Jack Lawler. And Todd Lim here at the No Gallery. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, reviews, and suggestions below. As long as you say thank you, Kate. <laughs>